Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Joe here, back with another Ball Python story time. And I know you probably saw the title of today's story time video and thought, "What in the world has Joel lost his mind?" Well, it's possible, but uh, I promise it's not even actually clickbait. As crazy as it sounds, please hang in here with me because I know the title makes me seem like a psycho. But I wanted to tell you about opening a tub last week and discovering that one of the babies had crawled through his own mess. And I was so excited. Stay tuned to find out why. I promise it's nothing weird or crazy, but it's actually a really cool story that I couldn't wait to share with you guys. You see, sometimes when you're breeding ball pythons, you know, things just don't always go the way they should or the way they you plan or the way you hope, right? And so sometimes, um, these babies will throw you for a loop. So that's what happened um, with one of these babies. In fact, the reality is the most part, baby ball pythons, if you give them the right environment, they, they start eating quickly and they eat voraciously. They're really good feeders when they're young. They're easy to transition to frozen thawed prey if that's what you want to do. And, and there's no problems in in seventh level reptiles world, we've had very few instances where we've had babies that wouldn't feed well. And uh, there was just one baby this year that really was an exception to that. And so, as I tell you the story, let me get my co-star out. He's a little shy, but I think you'll like to meet him. All right, guys. Well, I am back with my co-star here, and I have for you this beautiful little pastel banana clown. If I get the focus on him instead of me, he's a lot better looking. Look at him. Isn't he so cute? Now this guy actually uh, has just been a little bit of a troublemaker here. You can see how small he is. He fits easily in the palm of my hand. And uh, this is about the size you would see uh, a healthy hatchling. Um, but this guy is actually almost five months old. So the deal with this dude is even though the rest of his clutch mates and the vast majority of the babies from this year have fed fine. This little joker decided he was going to be stubborn and did not want to eat. And so just like everybody else, I followed the normal protocols that I follow and I tried to feed him and uh, he just refused to eat over and over and over. I went from paper towels to putting a hide in the, the tub with him. That still didn't do it. So I switched him from paper towels to cocoa blocks with a hide and that still wouldn't do it. He just refused to eat week in and week out. He just would not eat. He wouldn't eat live. He wouldn't eat frozen. I tried smaller prey size and he would not eat. And so um, even though he stayed a healthy weight, um, I, I weighed him um, not long ago and he was 60 grams, but he was looking really pencil thin. He was, his skin was all loose and kind of hanging off the sides of him. You can see now it's not. Um, but he just really was looking unhealthy and was, even though he hadn't lost a whole lot of weight overall and was still what I would consider a healthy weight, you could tell by the way he looked and his body constitution that he was not doing well. He just wouldn't eat anything. He was losing percentage of body weight, but more than that, his skin didn't fit. Um, and so I got to the point where I knew I was going to have to assist feed him. So, um, I got the smallest uh, rat that I could produce, a one-day-old pinky rat, and I tried to assist feed him. Now, assist feeding, if you're not familiar, means I'm basically going to take that really small prey size and I'm going to gently force it into his mouth. So put the head of the pinky in his mouth and, and try to let him figure it out from there. And a lot of times, they'll actually, once they get it in their mouth, they'll figure out, hey, I'm supposed to eat this. Um, sometimes they'll even... As soon as you put it in their mouth, they'll wrap it up. He looks like he feels like he's tensing up, like he wants to strike at me, which probably makes sense because I move my hands around a lot. Um, but so he uh, he just wouldn't eat. So I put the prey in his mouth and he wasn't having it. You know, he wasn't going to start swallowing. The second I put him down, he spit it out forcefully. And so we went through this a couple different times and it became apparent to me that he was just not going to eat not even assist feeding. And so I had to do something that's pretty drastic. I've only ever had to do this one other time. Um, and that is I had to force feed him. Now, force feeding is something I'm not going to show it on a video. I never will. 
Um, I don't think that that's something that you should learn on a YouTube video. That's just my opinion. Force feeding can be very dangerous if it's done wrong. It's something that you should save only as a last resort. And I really felt like I was there. Like he wouldn't eat on his own. He wouldn't assist feed. And he was definitely looking bad and got to the point where I was concerned that if I didn't get some nutrients into him soon, I thought he would probably pass away. And that was obviously not acceptable. So I made the decision to go ahead and force feed him. Now I'm going to tell you, I hate force feeding the babies. They hate it so much and it's no fun for me, but it's a lot better than watching one of these animals that I've taken so much time and care and love to produce and to watch it just fade away. So I had to force feed him. Um, so I took the pinky. Now what you do is I had to basically, it's exactly what it says. I had to hold him a certain way. He's fighting me with all the strength that he has, which even surprisingly, as tiny as this guy is, he's got a lot of strength. And I had to force the pinky into his mouth and use a probe. I use a, a, a sexing probe to push it down. And so I, I start first with the as least traumatic force feeding as possible um, by putting the head and shoulders in the back of his throat. But as soon as I set him down, he spit it right out. He was not having it. Now, I want to say this caveat uh, again, force feeding is only a last resort. I actually had a friend, the first snake that I had that, that would not eat. I never even uh, its entire life, I never saw it open its mouth of its own free will. Um, it had a, a cleft palate, kind of a little deformity. And although it looked to me like it should be survivable, she just would never eat on her own. Um, and I ended up having to take her to a friend who's had like 30 years experience and he force fed her and showed me the proper way to do it. And so I learned and I actually had to force feed that baby for nine months. And she still, even with that, she never gained weight. She fought so hard every time that I fed her. I think she burned more calories than she was getting from the, the small prey size. And unfortunately, after nine months, she she passed away. So and I was hoping to never have to do that again. So even the idea of having to force feed really just has such a painful memories. It's negative, so such strong negative connotation that I was, I was really not wanting to do that, but I had to. So I, I tried level one, I guess I'll call it force feeding. He spit it right back out. And so then I knew I had to get this thing all the way in his throat. It's really traumatic for the animal and for me. Um, but <laughs> I had to basically hold him straight, shove that thing down his throat all the way so that he couldn't get it back out. Um, and so I had everything in there except the tail and he was fighting so hard, but finally he was just exhausted. I got it all the way in, just the tail could be seen. And I set him down to, to see whether he would try and spit it out again or not. Um, so that I could stop it as quickly as possible if he did. And he was just so exhausted. He just sat there and caught his breath for like five, five or 10 minutes. And I knew he was tired. He didn't look like he was fighting it anymore. So after observing him closely, obviously you don't want to do that and then leave the snake. You want to keep a close eye on him to make sure everything is okay. Um, and I, I, I put him back in his tub and I put him back in the dark as he was still regaining his strength. And to my great joy, when I went to check on him a few minutes later, well, not a few minutes, more than that, I wanted to give him time to, you know, to process and beat himself. He had eaten the rat. So I was so excited um, to get just a little bit of something in him. Come back the next week and I decided to take another day old pinky rat and this time I, I gave him the option to eat it first and so I left it in there with him overnight and I went away. Now obviously a pinky rat can't harm this snake at all, can't even really do anything. I don't even know if they have their teeth in yet but um, left him overnight. When I came back the next morning, I can't tell you how excited I was to see that he had eaten that rat on his own. This was a huge, huge milestone. Um, but getting back to the title of the story, um, when it came time to feed him the next week, uh, I went in to check and I opened the tub and lo and behold, he had poop smeared all the way down his back. Now I know that's disgusting and it's gross and it seems crazy to say I was excited, but I was so excited because even though this baby at the time was about four, four and a half months old, he had never pooped since, you know, just a little bit of liquid and urate passing since he was born from what he absorbed in the egg. And because he had never eaten, he had never defecated. 
And I was so excited, as crazy as it sounds, because to me that meant something is working. He's getting the nutrients, his body is processing it, and now he's expelling the leftovers as waste. Now, why he had to crawl through it, I don't know. I guess he takes after his grandfather, who likes to do that all the time. But in this instance, where it's normally a very negative thing, and it's frustrating, and you got to clean them, and they hate being cleaned from that, it just happens. It's part of keeping snakes and reptiles, especially in the quantities that I do. But it was so exciting to see that he was growing and going through that process. Now, unfortunately, the week after that, he refused again. But this week, this past week on feeding day, I, I just for, for kicks, I dangled a frozen thawed fuzzy rat in front of his face and he took it. First time I've ever seen him strike at a meal. He took it. He wrapped it. I came back and checked on later and he had eaten it. So he took all on his own a frozen thawed fuzzy, which not only was his first time taking food on his own, but it was a larger meal than he's ever had before. And so I'm so excited. I weighed him yesterday. He was up from 60 ounces, uh, or I'm sorry, 60 grams when I had to force feed him. There he goes. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, 60 grams when I had to force feed him. He's up to 86. Now, that's a huge increase and it's great. He'll have some, he'll get rid of some of that rat that he just ate. So that's not all true growth, but it's definitely the great sign. And like I said, you can see, I'm going to be careful. I don't want to stress him out anymore. You can see that his skin fits nice and tight. He's actually looking like a ball python. Even though he's considerably smaller than the other ball pythons from this clutch, I'm going to make sure he gets about eight or 10 meals at least. If he gets eight or 10 meals consistently week after week and he's growing, then I'll feel comfortable that he's ready to potentially be um, sent to a new home if somebody wants him. But for now, he's just going to stay here until we know he's absolutely healthy and ready to go. But that's the crazy story about how I got excited that my ball python crawled through poop. So this little guy doesn't have a name because I don't intend for him to stay here. But go ahead and think of what you would call him. Maybe we can follow his journey together. Hey, little guy. Isn't he precious? Thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this story. It's weird and it's crazy as it is, but sometimes things just don't go as planned. You have to adapt and overcome. And this looks like it's going to be a happy ending to this story, unlike the last time that I had to engage force feeding. So I'm really excited. The snake is beautiful and you guys are awesome. Thanks for tuning in. And I just want to remind you to share the love of reptiles with everybody you can.